and hello everyone welcome back to another Lua tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be talking about variables and data types so first let's talk about data types what exactly is a data type well a data type is very easy to understand for example when I say 5 what is 5 5 is a number or an integer. This is a data type. 5 is the data type of number. And that is how data types works. They're very simple. So we have nil. Nil means nothing, empty, null, undefined. So if something is nil, it doesn't exist or it's empty. We didn't have a number, which would be something like 1, 2, negative 99, 9.87, these are all numbers. We didn't have string, and string is just a fancy word for text. So anything in double quotes or single quotes. These are all text. We didn't have Boolean. This is yes or no, also known as true or false. So true or false. If something is true, you can think of it as yes. If something is false, you can think of it as no. So when someone says, is it true that you were five? Well, that would be yes, because it is true that you were five. Or if when you make a statement, and it can be either true or false. I have been to jail. That is false. I have never been to jail. So nope, that is not true. And then you have tables. Tables is the equivalence of arrays in Lua, or lists, if you're coming from Python. Tables are out of the scope of this video, so we'll be leaving them for a different video on their own. Okay, so those are data types. They're the basic ones you'll mostly be working with if you're using Lua. Now, let's get an example of a variable. A variable is something that can contain something else. It's giving a name to something so you can reuse it later. For example, local name. This is how you create a variable by specifying local and then the variable name. This can be anything from X to name to example like that. One way I like to teach is by using a little bit of math. For example, we have X. Now, of course, if we were to print x here, and this will just display what is inside of this variable, we'll get nil. We can also set x equal to nil, and this will be nil. You also set x on a different line than when you created it. So here's x, and we can do that. That also works. We'll still get nil, though. So let's say x is free. Now, if you remember the basics of algebra, you can usually say something like x plus 8 is equal to 11. Now, you remember maybe in high school where you had to convert this to figure out what x is. But in this scenario, we are actually getting x. We know what x is. We are providing x. So we know we'll get 11 here. So we run this, we get 11. So x here is just a placeholder for this number three here. So if we do this, we'll get the same output. But this time we're just storing it in x because now we can reuse it wherever we want. So if we run it, we'll get 11. If we change x here to let's say eight, then x will be changed everywhere to that eight. And we'll get to showing you more examples in a second. But you do get two types of variables. You get the local scope variable, which means it is not allowed to be used outside of this file. And when we get to it, outside functions. That is a local variable. It's not allowed to be used outside of its scope. So in this scenario, it's scoped to this file. If we create another file, we cannot use this variable from that file. But then you get your global scope variable, which could be something like global. 
variable, and this could be 10. This global variable, as you can see, it does not start with local. It is because it is globally allowed to be used. So this global variable is allowed to be used outside of this file. So if we create another Lua file and we try to use this variable, which we'll get to in a future tutorial, we are able to use this variable. However, it is definitely good practice to go underscore g dot whenever you create a global variable. Just this, this is just to specify this is a global variable. It's not necessary to have this, it is completely optional, but it is kind of recommended to have an underscore g just to give that extra specification we're talking about a global scope variable. Now, if a lot of this is flying over your head, don't get too concerned. We'll be practicing this a bit in future tutorials as well. Now, let's look a little bit more at variables, just variables in general. We can have a floating point variable, and a floating point variable is something like 3.1415, whatnot. We can have an integer type variable. Both of these are considered numbers, and this would be a free. We can have strings, so single or double quotes, and in any piece of text, this can include these dashes that are usually used for comments. And we can also do Boolean, so true or false. Booleans are a little bit out of the scope of this video, so we'll definitely get back to them in the future. As for strings, as I said, you can either do single quotes or you can do double quotes, but you can also do two brackets. And this will allow for multi-line strings. Take note, these strings are taken up very literal. So if we were to print F here, then we'll get a very literal representation of what we had. So if you don't want it to have a tab and a new line, you might want to just do this. And now you'll notice if we were to run this, it will look completely different. And the last thing I want to show you about variables before we move on to an example of them is how you can assign multiple variables at a time. For example, let's go local one, two, three. All right, so we have three variables here separated by commas. Now we can just go one, two, three. So now one is assigned to this one here. Two is assigned to this two here. And three is assigned to this false here. So they're following the same pattern. And this is how we can assign multiple variables at the same time. Now let's use an example where we actually use a variable. For example, let's go here and say local name is equal to Steve. Then print, hello, my name is, and remember to concatenate, we can use two dots and then whatever we want to add. In this case, we can say name. We can say name because name is a placeholder for this Steve here. So saying this is exactly the same as saying this. Let's go here. I have a cool name and in Steve. And here we have a little bit of an example. If we were to run this, we'll get, hello, my name is Steve, which is here specified as name. Then here, I have a cool name, comma, Steve. I have a cool name, comma, and then the name variable. If you wanted to, you could do this. Well, this is perfectly fine as well. It will give you the same results. But think of it this way. Let's say this was a piece of text that was probably like a hundred thousand lines of code, right? And now you want to change the name from Steve to Mike. Now you have to go Mike and you'll have to change it on multiple places. So first Mike, and then you have to go Mike and you have to do this a hundred thousand times. Immediately you can see where the benefit of using a variable would be better. Because if we use a variable like this, then if we change it at one place to Mike, you can also work, then it will change everywhere. 
And take note, once you have assigned a variable, you can reassign it. So if I go here and say name is equal to Steve, then now name will be equal to Steve. So it's first Mike or Muke and then Steve. So take note, you can reassign a variable if you ever wanted to. And there you go. That's the basics of variables. We'll be using them more throughout the whole course. So if you are feeling a little bit confused, don't worry, we will be covering them a bit more.